everyone welcome back i have another empties video for you today i feel like i just filmed it but i think it's because my one for december was like late into january or something surprisingly this bag is filled again i really don't know how this keeps happening um but hey i guess it makes for an interesting video right okay uh digging right in the first thing that i finished most recently actually is this neutrogena hydro boost body gel cream I love this thing to pieces. I know I've talked about the Hydro Boost range in general from Neutrogena quite a bit, and it's because frankly they can do no wrong. I love the moisturizer, I love their, um, it's not a primer, what the heck is it? Serum, I love the body cream. Uh, and I did try to go buy it recently at Chopper's Drug Mart, and they were all sold out, probably because it was on sale, and I was like, ugh. So I do need to pick more of this up. I am currently using a Soap and Glory body moisturizer, but as soon as I run out of that one, I'll be going back to this one, um, just to like go back and forth between the two because I do enjoy both. Uh, but this one is fantastic and I love the smell of it. Oh geez, let's talk about the boring thing. I always have nail polish remover in these things. I don't know how I use so much nail polish remover. People always comment on the fact that I seem to be running through it all the time. I don't know. I, I go through, I guess, a bottle every two months. I only do my nails once a week but maybe I just soak a lot of the polish remover into the cotton round anyway this is the Huo regular nail polish remover it's the best kind I hate any of the moisturizing ones they just don't seem to work and I mentioned that because I've got one in here that I finished up it's a mini size of another brand that was just garbage anyway the Quo regular nail polish remover is the best um, and this other nail polish remover that I used up was in this cute little like tiny packaging that I'm pretty sure I picked up in the UK when I had to like redo my nails or something like that while traveling um, or at least I think that is where I picked it up it is the Manicare moisturizing nail polish remover and it is garbage i tried to use it recently just to like use it up for the sake of using it up because i had it for quite a while and it took like nothing off i was really annoyed so i did use it up but in essence i had to go back to this one to actually get my polish off because it wasn't doing anything i am going to keep this packaging though because this is great for travel like it's got like um kind of like a child safety type opening so it means like you have to push down to open it and i think it makes it so that it's not like going to bust open my luggage and it's it's handy to have nail polish remover when you're traveling especially for like, like your nail breaks or you got to reapply your polish so i'll be keeping the bottle for sure okay the next thing i finished up is the sephora collection supreme cleansing oil uh this stuff is amazing it's like super cheap on sephora's website it's like 19 bucks i think canadian and it does the job to get my makeup off. This is what I use to get like my face makeup off before I'll go in with like a Bioderma micelle solution just to clean up the extra gunk. Um, I don't, I do use it on my eyes a little bit, but I definitely prefer the Marcel Gentle Makeup Remover for, for sensitive eyes on the actual eye area because that stuff gets everything off. But a cleansing oil is great just to get like the junk like of foundation and all that kind of stuff off your face. I love this one because it works really well and it's super cheap. I don't love the scent of it. It just smells like old makeup. Yeah, it's, it's not my favorite scent. There's nothing wrong with it. I've had many, many bottles of this, so it's not like it's gone bad or anything like that. It's just like the scent of it itself. Um, I'm happy to have used this up finally because I have other cleansing oils that I want to use in my collection, but because I wear so little makeup now, I, I just haven't been able to use this up because I can only get through it or use a little bit of it once a week. So I've got some other ones I'm going to be trying out for now because they're cheap. I think one's from ColourPop and I want to see how that would work. Um, but I will absolutely go back to this and I think I've already said it, but I, I've gone through many bottles of this before. Okay, we have a bunch of bath bombs from jo Joe's. Uh, you guys seem to indicate that you liked when I talked about the empty packaging so long as I put a picture up of it, so I'll remember to do that. Um, so this one was the Penguin Bath Bomb which had tangerine, grapefruit, orange zest, strawberries, jasmine, rose petals, apples, white musk, vetiver, and ylang ylang. Uh, so this one was actually quite interesting. It was purple on the inside and it created like a bit of a milky lavender bath water. It was really quite pretty and it had a really soft smell. Um, I can't really smell much of it left in the packaging. Uh, based on the like fruit notes in this, I thought it would have been a little bit more pungent, but it was softer and it was really pleasant. So I really enjoyed that one. And thank heavens for these notes because otherwise I would never remember all these bath bombs. Uh, so this next one was the Coco Rose Bath Bomb. Ah yes, I used this like the day before Valentine's Day because it was kind of like just, you know, fit the theme. 
So this was a white bath bomb with rosebuds on top and it had like a drip of icing on top that had like sparkles all dispersed on it. It was really pretty looking and it smelled really nice. The notes on this were bergamot, lemon, lily, ginger, nutmeg, hyacinth, freesia, peony, and musk, which to me sounds like a weird combination if I just read it off, but it actually worked out really well. Um, it was one of those scents that reminded me of something my mom would have used from Crabtree and Evelyn back in like, like the late 80s, early 90s. It just kind of had that sort of scent to it. And I don't think it's a scent I would have necessarily enjoyed when I was younger, but I did really like it this time around. So I, I really enjoyed that one. Okay, another packaging here. Okay, so this thing was massive. This was the Cozy Autumn Days Bubble Bar, and it's shaped like a big freaking slice of pie. So this one smelled amazing. It was like apples and cinnamon, and it just smelled so freaking good. So it's not a bath bomb. I almost screwed up and threw it into the bathtub entirely until I realized it was more of a bubble bar. Um, and Thank heavens I clocked onto that so I was able to get some actual bubbles out of it. Um, but it, it was just like this hot pink kind of color that it left the bath water that kind of same color too. And I just, I really enjoyed it. I haven't used the whole thing up, but I did repackage it into like a Ziploc bag so I could like crumble it under the shower every now and then because it wasn't going to keep very well in this little plastic thing. So I just wanted to talk about it because I did get rid of the packaging, but it is a really nice bubble bar. Okay, so this one was the Merry and Bright bath bomb. And this thing was enormous. It was shaped like a light bulb, an outdoor light bulb for the Christmas season. And I loved it. I put the whole thing in the bath water, which I probably could have broken it up and like, you know, spread it out over several days or whatever. But I just wanted to get that full impact of putting this massive bath bomb into the bath and honestly it was really wonderful it was this deep purple water with blue and purple foam on top so I have a jacuzzi tub um, which sounds very fancy but it just came with the condo when we bought it so somebody had that installed like a long time ago and I'm reaping the benefits of that because it's a deep soak tub too so I actually get a lot of foam out of my bath bombs too because when I turn on the jets it causes foam to rise up and the foam ended up being blue and purple swirled together. It was so freaking pretty. I really enjoyed that one. And I mean, it was absolutely gargantuan, but like there's so much fun to throw like this massive bath bomb into your bathtub. I, I highly recommend it. Okay, so this may seem a little bit dumb, but I've decided to start including candles in these empties. Let me know if you really don't care because I know there's some people that are very particular about their empties like personally I cannot stand when people put shampoo conditioner toothpaste and like other nonsense like that in their, their empties I just I'm just like why you would never haul that your toothpaste why would you mention it in empties so if you're really not into hearing about candles in my empties just let me know I'm not gonna be offended but I have been hauling them recently so I thought I would talk about them I don't have all of the ones because I've mostly thrown them out at this point but I do have this one because I made the decision recently to start talking about them so this is the I can't, this cat hair shower and it's driving me crazy uh, this is the uh, Bath and Body Works slash white barn scented candle and it's the peppermint marshmallow one it's one of their single wick ones which I tend to buy for my workstation at home I really started loving lighting a candle in the morning when I first get to my workstation on my kitchen table. It just gives me, I don't know, something a little something to look forward to about going to my workstation because frankly I, I hate working from home. I know there's a lot of people who are thriving right now with it. I've never liked it. I can't stand it. I just, I cannot wait to finally go back to the office, you know, in like 2025. Um, so anyway, I've really been enjoying having a candle there. One of my more recent finishes uh, at the station was Frozen Lake by Bath and Body Works and I love that scent but uh, I don't have the empties to show you uh, but this is my most recent burn so this is the peppermint marshmallow um, single wick candle and I thought this was going to be a bit much when I first got it because when you first smell it you're like that is a thick cloying sweet scent and the marshmallow is quite thick for me anyway I do find that the marshmallow scents from Bath and Body Works tends to be sometimes a little bit oppressive I guess I would say but there's something about the peppermint mixed into this that makes it a little bit I mean it's a soft scent don't get me wrong but I want to say it gives it a little bit of a harsher edge to it which I found really cut down on the marshmallow scent and gave me enough of the peppermint scent to make me really happy so I really liked this one and I would absolutely buy more 
probably next year because I'm assuming this is like like Christmas holiday scent that I can't get anymore. But I really did enjoy this, so I was I was happy about this one for sure. I can't remember what I've got burning right now. I think it's Oh yeah, it's the pumpkin spice one. It does not smell like a pumpkin spice latte. I don't know what they were thinking with that one. Okay, oh, <laughs> I couldn't finish this. I <laughs> I couldn't do it. So this is the Thayer's Witch Hazel um, Aloe Vera Formula Alcohol-Free Toner, which I like in every other scent except for this one, which is cucumber. This one <laughs> made me gag every time I went to go use it. And I mean, I've gotten pretty far it's down to about here, so like, I tried, man, okay? I tried really, really hard to appreciate this one. It works fine. There's nothing wrong with it, much like all the other toners. It's just, uh, I'm not looking forward to smelling this. It's just the smell on this is repugnant to me. It's just, ugh, makes me gag. Oh, uh, no, I, uh, I love eating cucumbers, don't get me wrong. I don't want the cucumber scent in my face products. I think it's so disgusting. Uh, I like the rose petal one. I like the lavender one. Those are all fine. The cucumber one can go die in a fire. I cannot stand that scent. I have a face mask I used up here recently. This is the Aaliyah Skin Pink Perfect Australian Pink Clay Mask. This was sent to me, I'm gonna guess about a year ago, and they had a huge desire for a social media push. Like when they sent me the like, could you review this type email? They were like, make sure you use the hashtag and blah, blah, blah. And I think I actually got that email like three times from them, even after I already had the product, which seemed a little bit strange, but clearly they wanted attention. So this was a pink clay mask. I am almost completely done, but it's gotten so hard now that I can't really spread it onto my skin. I used it for the last time last week and it was just like nearly unspreadable. So I'm like, okay, you're almost basically done with this. Just be done with it. Um, it smells nice actually for a clay mask, uh, which makes me a little bit suspicious because clay masks in general don't tend to smell very good, so there must be some sort of fragrance component to this, which I know not everybody likes in their skincare, although I do. Um, and I, I found it enjoyable. Did I feel like it did anything super amazing to my skin? No, not really. I didn't notice a change, but it was one of those face masks that was nice to use. And I know we've all got those things out here that we're like, Are, uh, is it actually doing something for my face? Maybe, maybe not, but it's just fun to use. And that was this product. So that was the, what's the name again? Aaliyah Skin Australian Pink Clay Mask. And I'm pretty sure they actually are Australian. I think it was sent to me from Australia. Ah, this is one of my favorite body washes and there's like a little bit of a chunk left in it. So this is the Philosophy Cinnamon Buns scent. I don't know how often you can actually buy this because I don't feel like it's always available. But whenever I see it, I scoop it up because it's one of the best scents. It smells exactly like cinnamon buns and icing. Oh, that is such a good scent. It might be a holiday one. Maybe that's why I only see it every now and then. Oh my God, it's so good. <laughs> it's so sweet. It's just like cinnamon buns. It's like you walked into a Cinnabon and it really makes me want to go eat cinnamon buns right now. But um, yeah, the Philosophy shower gels are amazing. I tend to love the scents in general. There's a few that I'm especially taken with that this is one of them. But I gotta tell you, I'm not a big fan of this packaging. This looks like regular shower gel type packaging, right? But this gets so hard to squeeze out of. I have to like keep it like this uh, in the shower, which is difficult as it is. I have to like prop it up between my um, shampoos and conditioners. Um, but even when it's down like this and all the product is sunk to the bottom, squeezing it out of here onto my poof is a royal pain in the butt. And sometimes I've even like decanted this into like an easier squeezy tube because I just can't be bothered with constantly trying to squeeze it out of here. Um, so I wish they'd change up the packaging, but I feel like the packaging is very, emblematic of them like they're always doing this type of packaging so i'm guessing they're never gonna get away from that but man i find it a big pain in the butt anyway that's not gonna stop me from buying them because i do really love the scents and that's not gonna change anytime soon oh i do have another candle in here okay i thought i made that decision recently to uh talk about candles but i guess not anyway this is what i mentioned before this is frozen lake this smells wonderful it is like a frozen lake in the middle of winter and you've got the crisp air and you've got the snowflakes falling down and all you can see is that lake that's frozen over and it's just serene. That's exactly what I picture when I smell this thing. 
I liked it so much in the single wick one that I went out and bought I, I think a few of the three wick ones right away and they're sitting in like underneath my sink right now waiting to be used it's so so good and I was surprised how much I liked this because a lot of the fresh scents when you burn them don't smell right like I don't tend to think I want something crisp and fresh when I'm burning a candle because there's a hot fire in it and that usually can mess with my senses um, or nose anyway so I was surprised at how much I like this because it is a very crisp scent and even when it's burning it still smells crisp it doesn't turn to like a warm scent at all and I love it I love it to pieces I hope this is one that they have every year it's new to me as of this year and I'm, I'm really hopeful that they have a whole bunch next year because I will pick up tons of them okay I actually finished up a perfume this is from Bath and Body Works and it's the peppermint candy cane fragrance shimmer mist I love this thing I wore it all throughout December for I think several years in a row now because it just smells like Christmas to me it smells like candy canes and I just freaking loved it and of course I love the shimmer side of it there's nothing more fun than applying glitter all over your body as far as I'm concerned it wasn't heavy glitter it was more of a shimmer spray but it was still very delightful to apply and um, yeah it's all done I finished it up in February because I wore it all in December and I still had a little bit left and I was like okay I need to actually like finish this up because it's time it was almost done and I wasn't gonna wait until next December to use it again so yeah finished up a whole perfume bottle how often does that happen I mean it was easier with that one because it's a fragrance mist and I could easily do like 10 sprays on myself which you really cannot do with perfume where it's gonna be too much um, but yeah I got through a whole perfume bottle and I'm feeling very proud of myself so I recently filmed a closet tour because some people had suggested that they'd like to see sort of what's in my backup in terms of skincare and the video didn't do too well so clearly not that many people were interested in it which is fine but when I was going through my closet I realized that I had so many sample sizes for traveling that I was just holding on to and don't get me wrong I'm actually very good about bringing sample sizes when I'm on traveling like the little foil packets the mini things um, because I get use out of them that way but because <laughs> nobody is traveling right now or they shouldn't be um, I have no reason to be saving these for any reason like I'm not traveling in 2021 either probably so I started using a lot of these up and the first one in here is this Irish Spring body wash uh, this is the original scent I think I got this in like a race kit probably like three years ago and just put it in the closet thinking you know I'll get to it eventually I will say that this did kind of mess with my senses a little bit because my dad uses the Irish Spring spring body uh, soap and whenever I was using this in the shower it was just weird because I was like hey dad like <laughs> a little bit strange um, it smells very like my dad and his bar soap that's all, <laughs> that's all I can really say if you smelled Irish Spring before you know exactly what it smells like it was fine to use I got a ton of uses out of this little bottle like it was unbelievable how much was in here it's not something I would purchase though just based on the scent alone <laughs> Some more minis that I got through based on that video. Um, okay, this first one here is a sample size of the Glam Glow Thirsty Mud Hydrating Treatment. I got two uses out of this little thing and I loved it so much that I went out and bought the full size of the Glam Glow Thirsty Mud, which is very expensive. It was 77 Canadian, which is just horrifying, but this is so freaking good. This is so moisturizing. Um, it, they kind of say it's like a face mask, but frankly, I put it on my face and it just sunk in there was no like removing it afterwards it just sank straight into my skin so I was like okay my skin is thirsty and it needs this face mask so I picked it up in a full size uh, I was happy for the sample size because it made me try it before I bought it and if I hadn't had that sample size there's no way in hell I would have ever spent that kind of money on a moisturizer but um somehow I justified it after having tried that sample size and honestly I don't regret it I think the cost is exorbitant but I think it actually works so that makes it worthwhile in my book here's something else that surprised me quite a bit this is the Cetaphil did you say Cetaphil or Cetaphil moisturizing cream it's for face and body it's for uh, dry to very dry skin I use this exclusively on my face and holy cow this is good it might be better than my Aveeno moisturizer which breaks my heart a little bit because I have been so invested in Aveeno for almost 20 years now but this stuff was 
wild. It was so freaking good. And I, I think it's like one of those cheaper brands at the drugstore, frankly. I, I've never really paid much attention to them because there's nothing about the branding that I love. It has no scent, which is kind of depressing to me. I'd rather it did smell good. But this worked wonders on my face. So I am considering getting like a full size at some point. Um, just not yet, because I got a bunch of moisturizers to get through. But yeah, this like, you know, non-impressive brand certainly impressed the crap out of me. Okay, uh, I've got a vitamin C radiant serum here by Honest Beauty. It's got this cool like twist up top. I always kind of like those little mechanisms. Um, I didn't think anything of this. It was sent to me probably a few months ago and I used it um, before I put moisturizer on and I honestly don't feel like it did anything to my face. <laughs> Which is kind of, you know, eh. I definitely wouldn't purchase it. I think it's kind of expensive. Um, I like the concept of Honest Beauty. I, I like Jessica Alba, but it just didn't do anything for me. Uh, I, I literally have no comment about it because I don't feel like it did a damn thing in my face, <laughs> to my face. So yeah, I don't know. I guess I wouldn't recommend it. Okay, almost done here. I have a sample of the Lush Odie Creamy Dreamy Shower Cream. Okay, uh, so I don't know what a shower cream is. Am I supposed to use like a moisturizer before I get out of the shower? Am I supposed to use it as shower gel? I have no idea. I applied this in the shower and I think I rinsed it off because I really didn't know what to do with it. Um, ew, it's not my kind of scent. It's like oats with menthol? What is that scent? I have no idea what that scent is. Um, it wasn't for me, frankly. I, I still, somebody tell me what a shower cream is, please, because I have no idea. <laughs> so I wouldn't, I wouldn't pick this up. I think it came in like a lush order as an extra thing, but like, yeah, not a fan. Okay, two last things here. I've got a pair of lashes by Creme de la Creme, which, mm, a little bit disappointing. They were nice the two times that I worn them, maybe three times, but I took them off one time and was pulling off the glue, as you do, and uh, they, the thing just like ripped. So let me see if I can show you this. Please zoom in on that. So this just like tore in the middle, and I'm like, well, that's not usable, because if you pull apart, that like um, the binding agent that the lashes are stuck to, there's like a, a firmer little band in there. Like it's, they're goners. You, you just can't recover from that. So these were the Au Naturel Too Fabulous to Care lashes by Creme de la Creme and I wouldn't recommend them just based on the fact that they tore apart so easily. So yeah, pretty to wear, but like not worth the cost at all based on my experience with them. Okay, and the last thing I have in here is the Milk Makeup Kush Mascara. This was a, birthday thing probably oh it must have been the 2020 birthday gift that I only got to using relatively recently if you've been watching my get ready with me's weekly throughout uh, quarantine it's definitely been the mascara that I've been wearing the most um, just because it was the one I had around I liked it actually um, but I've been wearing it for too long so I needed to do get rid of it the brush is a little bit big for me but I do appreciate the fact that it tapers quite a bit at the top which I, I need a tapered brush, frankly. I, I don't know how people use these hourglass shaped ones. They're just way too big and I end up with mascara everywhere. So I did really like this. The formula was good. The, the wear was fine for, you know, how long I'm wearing makeup, which nowadays is maybe three or four hours. Um, so I can't really speak to the longevity of it whatsoever, but I, I did like how it wore my lashes. It didn't give me that crispy feeling, which I can't stand when mascaras give you that crispy, feeling. I like them to be more supple and this had that. So I did really enjoy it. Would I purchase it? Probably not because I'm super cheap when it comes to mascara and there are so many good drugstore mascaras that I don't really see the reason to spend 30 bucks on a mascara at Sephora. But I mean, it's one of the ones that I would absolutely recommend picking up if you can get it as a sample size. So yeah, Milk Kush Mascara. It was good. Okay, so that is it. My bag is empty. Those are all of my empties for the last month and a half or so. Um, again, I keep, I mention this every time. <laughs> Sorry, it's so much reiteration, but I'm surprised about how much was in here, frankly. Um, but you know, hey, many reviews are helpful. So anyway, that's gonna be it for this empties video. Thanks for joining me today. Take care, stay safe, and stay healthy. Bye.